Hey guys, welcome back to Making Sense of Chemistry. In our last video, we talked about ionic bonds, one way that two atoms can achieve that full set of valence electrons that make them happy and stable through the donation of an electron. But there's actually another type of bond that can occur between two atoms, and that is a covalent bond or a sharing of electrons. So today we're going to dive into what is a covalent bond, and we're gonna do a recipe that is gonna demonstrate both ionic bonds and covalent bonds being broken and reformed as we make pop rocks. So odds are you have probably eaten pop rocks. You know, those little candies that when you put them in your mouth, they fizzle and pop and they feel like they're jumping all over your mouth. Well, that's actually achieved through the addition of carbon dioxide gas into the candy while it is being made that gas is trapped within a sugar shell. So when you put it in your mouth, it melts, and you feel that gas escape, making that popping feeling and sound in your mouth. Now we can make something kind of similar. It's not going to fizz or pop nearly as much as the ones that you buy at the store, simply because that's a patented process that is actually kind of highly dangerous to do. But we're gonna do a safe version we can make at home. And we'll talk about what is actually going on chemically within those pop rocks. But this is definitely a recipe that you have to take a little time with because we're going to have to give it a cool down period. So I'm going to dive in and explain what it is we're making. And then we will talk about the science behind what is happening. So to make pop rocks, you actually only need a couple of ingredients. First of all, you have to have sugar. You need to have just a little bit of baking soda, light corn syrup, water, citric acid, and if you don't have citric acid on, on hand, check your grocery store, especially in their canning aisle, because this is used in a lot of uh, canning products. And then you need flavoring and food coloring. Now, one way you can kind of get around having the two different things is you can just pick up a packet of Kool-Aid. So I just picked up some cherry flavored Kool-Aid. So this will give me both the color in my candy and the flavor. So you can do it multiple different ways, but that's how I'm going to do it. Now, this is gonna involve making a boiled sugar candy. And so I highly recommend kids have a parent available and with you while you are doing this because sugar, when you're cooking it, gets very, very hot. And we don't want anybody to get any kind of burns while they are making this. It's also really helpful if you happen to have a candy thermometer. So that way you can watch the temperature of your sugar as you're cooking it. Now, if you don't, we'll talk about what you can be observing to know that it's ready. Uh, but just know that you do need to keep a very close eye on it because sugar will boil and it will go through different stages very fast once it's hot. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started mixing this up and prepping it on the stovetop. Step one is actually to go ahead and prepare a sheet pan that you're going to use. So I just dusted mine with cornstarch. This is simply to make sure that your candy doesn't stick to the pan when it is all done. Another tip is to have some of your other ingredients ready to go because as soon as the sugar comes off the stove, you're gonna to wanna to mix them in. So I've already measured out a fourth a cup of the citric acid. I have the baking soda ready along with my measuring spoon because we're gonna be adding a teaspoon of this and a quarter cup of this along with our flavoring into the sugar right away. And so I'd like to have it pre-measured so I'm not sitting there and fussing with measuring it out while I'm trying to get stuff mixed. But then over in a saucepan, we're gonna put two cups of sugar, a quarter cup of water, and our corn syrup. Now something to know about sugar when you're cooking it is that it does burn if you aren't continuously stirring it. So don't just let it sit and wait for it to bubble. Make sure that you are stirring it around. One that helps to evenly distribute the heat, but it also keeps it from burning. But we're just gonna keep doing this until we start to see bubbles form. And I'll show you what it looks like, what a rapid boil looks like, so you have an idea of what it is you are looking for. Okay, so here you can see that my sugar mixture is rapidly bubbling. So I'm gonna let this go for a minute and then I'm going to remove it from the heat. All right, now that we've removed this from the heat, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in a teaspoon of baking soda and our quarter cup of citric acid. And then we're going to add in our flavoring as well. and go ahead and get that all stirred in there. So what you've essentially made with the sugar and corn syrup and water is the candy structure. And what we are adding now are the ingredients that are actually going to create a reaction. Now, I don't know if you can tell, 
but do you see how this mixture actually looks like it's bubbling up a little bit or getting fuller? That is a chemical reaction occurring and you can probably even see the gas bubbles that are releasing. So I'm gonna stir this up, trying to make sure it doesn't overflow and then I'm gonna pour it into my pan right here. So you can already see a whole bunch of bubbles forming on this. Now we're gonna sprinkle another teaspoon of citric acid all over the top. There's a half. And another teaspoon sprinkled along the top. So here, if we look close, you can see bubbles from this chemical reaction forming. Now what's gonna happen is as the sugar cools, it's gonna trap some of those bubbles within it, which is gonna give us our pop rocks effect. Now, what I would recommend is let it cool a little bit here on the counter, and then you can pop it in the freezer for a couple of hours, cool the rest of the way. Uh, and that is going to help to firm this up. You do want it to cool all the way and you want the candy to harden all the way before we break it apart and make it into our Pop Rocks candy. Now time for the chemistry of what's happening. If you recall, there are some atoms that want to donate an electron or gain an electron in order to have a full set in their valence shell or have that octet, if possible, in the outer shell of their electron configuration. So here sodium has one valence electron and so it really wants to give that up so that way the next shell underneath is left with a full set of eight. Whereas chlorine has seven valence electrons and so it is most likely to want to gain an electron in its outer shell to have that full set of eight. And so sodium is going to donate an electron over to chlorine and it's going to leave the sodium with an outer shell that has a full eight and it's gonna give the chlorine an outer shell that has a full set of eight. Now what this does then is it gives each of these a charge. The sodium's gonna have a positive charge and the chlorine's gonna have a negative charge because one has fully donated an electron to the other. And when this happens, we have what we call an ionic bond. Now ionic bonds do require some energy to break, but not nearly as much as the other type of bond that we're gonna talk about next. Now, other times atoms can do what is called the sharing of electrons, which basically means that it's not fully giving up an electron and it's not fully gaining an electron. It is sharing it with another atom in a way where that electron acts like it's in the valence shell of both atoms. So let's just look at hydrogen because it's a pretty simple one. It has one proton and one electron. Now that first shell, if you recall, outside the nucleus can hold up to two valence electrons and hydrogen only has one. So what's actually gonna happen is they are going to form a bond between them where those electrons are shared between the two atoms. So sometimes those electrons are gonna act like they're in the valence shell of one hydrogen atom and sometimes they're gonna act like they're in the valence shell of the other hydrogen atom, which gives them both a full set in that outer shell. Now, this is called a covalent bond, and since there's just one pair of electrons being shared, we call it a single covalent bond. So this is not donating an electron, this is sharing an electron. Now, just like there can be single bonds, we can actually have more than one pair of electrons shared. So let's look here at oxygen. Oxygen has eight protons and therefore eight electrons. So we've put two on the first shell and that means we have six left on the outer shells. Now with them needing two more electrons to fill that full valence electron shell, they are going to actually be sharing more than one pair of electrons. So with oxygen, we can actually have two different sets of electrons shared between the two of them. So just like with the hydrogen, those electrons will act like they're in that valence shell of both atoms, giving them both that sense of having a full set of eight. And since we have two pairs of electrons being shared, we have what is called a double bond. So this is gonna be even stronger than that single covalent bond. We have two different bonds being formed, which means more energy is going to be required in order to break it. An atom can also form covalent bonds with more than one other atom. H2O, for example, good old fashioned water. We have one oxygen atom that needs to gain two electrons and we have two hydrogen atoms 
that need to gain one electron as well. And so the oxygen is actually going to form a single bond with each of these hydrogen atoms. And that way everybody is happy, everyone's got the number of electrons that they want to have. Now water in particular has some really cool properties, but we'll talk about that in a future video. But here we can just see that we have two single covalent bonds that are formed between these atoms and everybody has the number of electrons in that outer shell that they'd like to have. Now let's specifically look at the chemical reaction that happened in our pop rocks. You'll notice that nothing really happened until we took the baking soda and the citric acid and we added it in. Baking soda is also known as sodium bicarbonate, which is a molecule that's made up of sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and three oxygens. So that little subscript tells us how many of each atom there are. Now citric acid has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, again, in the amounts that are shown here. Sodium bicarbonate is actually pretty interesting because we'll see both ionic bonds and covalent bonds present, but it is classified as an ionic bond overall. So we've got sodium, which has a positive charge, and then we have an ion over here. So you see this negative on here that shows this is an ion, even though we also see covalent bonds present as well. So we see a covalent bond between carbon and oxygen. We see a double covalent bond between carbon and another oxygen. So these are covalently bonded together, but overall this is an ion because it has that negative charge. It needs that extra electron to be happy and sodium is what donates to it. So we do overall have an ionic bond that is being formed here and that is going to be broken apart during our chemical reaction. This is the chemical reaction overall. So you'll see chemical reactions written out this way where you have the reactants on one side and the products on the other. So on one side we have the sodium bicarbonate and the citric acid and we can see here that it is producing three different products on the other side. And then the arrow shows the direction that the reaction is occurring. Now we'll talk more about how you write out chemical reactions and how you balance them out. Because you'll notice this is not balanced. On one side there is only one sodium but we see there are three on the other side. And again, we will talk in the next video about how it is that we write these and how it is that we balance out chemical reactions. So don't worry about that yet, but just know what is happening is we are breaking the bonds of our reactants and we are creating three different products from it. Now our three products that are produced, the first one is sodium citrate, which we're not really going to do anything with, just know it is a, big molecule that's being made with different types of bonds in it, both covalent and ionic. We have H2O, which is water, and then CO2, carbon dioxide, which is released as a gas. So this is what is making the bubbles in our reaction, those bubbles of gas that are going to be trapped within that sugar shell, and that will be released when we let that sugar shell melt in our mouth. So I allowed my Pop Rocks to cool on the counter for about an hour, and then I covered the cookie sheet with plastic and put them in the freezer to harden the rest of the way. Now I did that in order to keep moisture from getting into my candy. It tends to get kind of sticky and tacky if you let too much moisture get into it, or if it's super humid in your area, try to keep it out of a real humid space. Now what I did afterwards is I started to break it apart into pieces, and they are gonna look something like this. Let's see if we can get that to show for you. And you can break these down further. So you can do it into chunks and then put it into like a gallon size bag and crush it up even further with like a rolling pin. Break it into whatever size you would like to have and then give it a try. So you should feel that gas escape as you eat the candy. And they're really, really sweet, just fair warning. Now, if you use Kool-Aid like I did, you might have a little bit of a sour taste to your candy. And that's just the nature of the Kool-Aid. But I like sour candy, so that is perfect for me. You can keep this in an airtight container for a couple of days to a week and enjoy your Pop Rock candy until it is all gone. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and learning the science behind Pop Rocks and how you can make your own Pop Rock candy at home. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. In the next video, we'll talk more about water and its special properties, but we'll also talk about chemical equations and how it is that we go about balancing them. Until then, think like a proton, stay positive. See you in the next video.